Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full-time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part-time musician who wants to go full-time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, best-selling author, and educator whose mission is to help musicians like you to increase the income you're already making and tap into new income streams so you can create a more diverse stable, reliable income from music, and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. Now let's dive into the Profitable Musician Show. Hello, everyone. This is Brie Noble, and I am here with my friend Sam Reddy from Musee. And I'm so excited to talk to him about what he has created for musicians, because I really think this is a fantastic tool. And it was made by a musician for musicians. These are the kinds of tools I love talking about because when they are made by a musician, they totally get you, (laughs) you know, they get what your needs are. So we're going to get into that in a minute. I just want Sam to give us a little bit of his background, um, you know, your musical background and then how you ended up starting Musi. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, so basically with Musi, it actually started as a college project. So this is about five or six years ago. Um, I went to Berkeley College of Music. And so originally I was there, I wanted to be in a band, I wanted to record albums, you know, typical rock star dreams. So, <laughs> um, so I did that for a little while, like I had a band for the first two years um, and then that sort of fizzled out. And so I needed something else to focus on. And I had this idea for a practice software for students. And so while I was at school, they had a startup lab and it was sort of like an incubator to try to get like businesses and ideas coming from the college. And so I joined that and me and my dad actually were working together on it. He's a software developer. So we worked together on the very first practice app that we built. Um, And it was basically my final project for college, but um, it worked pretty well. So we actually turned that into our business. And so for a couple of years, that was the main product. It used to be called I Want to Practice. Um, And then, right. (laughs) It's a very straightforward name. I like that. And so um, we did that for a couple of years. And then we started developing Musi in early 2019, which is kind of ironic because it had nothing to do with the pandemic. It was um, way before that. And so we started building the tech and it was actually for a slightly different reason when we started what we wanted to do was do what was basically like on-demand music lessons. So the idea was we'd have a pool of like a couple hundred teachers online and then a student could come online and request a lesson. And then it would automatically pair them with the most like suited teacher for that student's needs. And then that lesson would be conducted online and it was like pay by the minute. It was a really unique idea as far as like hosting lessons online. Um, But we started doing that. And then we launched it in January, 2020, and very quickly realized that we were gonna need more things designed for teaching your own students instead of acquiring new students. So the teachers made it, I mean, the pandemic kind of rolled right in and everybody needed to switch online. So um, fortunately for us, we had already built all of the online technology and all of that stuff that was all part of the teaching. Um, So all we really need to do is just format a little bit about how you're actually going to interact with your own students. And then from basically February of 2020 till now, that's, that's what we've been doing is just helping teachers teach online. Um, And it's, it's really fun, you know, it's going pretty well and can't complain. Yeah. And and I love that. I know that you also teach, right? We've been on a call before and you're like, Oh, I got to go. I've got a student or something. So you, you know, you are actually utilizing this and experiencing what needs you have, right? Absolutely. Yeah. That's sort of the best place to start from because, you know, in college, um, once I got out of, out of that, I started teaching. And so um, I've had students for a while and now I'm in Colorado and I've got a whole new batch of students here, but they're all online. And the nice thing is that I get to beta test everything with my kids because mm. they get to basically tell me what they want from the student side I get all the feedback from all the teachers that we work with. And then that sort of designs the product. We're very driven by what the teachers ask for. So it's very rare that I actually just implement something myself and 
without like, you know, getting the feedback on it. Now what we do, we literally have something that's just the list and every teacher suggestion that comes through goes onto the list. And the more something gets suggest, suggested, the higher up it goes. And when it reaches the top, that gets built next. So it's like a super democratic process. So the nice thing is that we know that the teachers and the users, this is actually something that they're looking for. Yeah, that's really, really smart because, you know, that's going to keep them coming back for your product if you keep giving them what it is that they need. Absolutely. Uh, and hopefully it's more useful. It actually gives yes. better things like that. I, I'm really curious. So this idea of someone coming in and like being matched up with a teacher and paying by the minute, like it's a super interesting idea. Yeah. <laughs> did, did people actually use it in that way? Or maybe they used it just to like try out a teacher. Cause I feel like you know, how can a musician really make progress as a student if they don't have a relationship with their teacher? But I could also see how they would use that to like test out different teachers to see who they'd want to continue with. Yeah, absolutely. I think it ended up being more in the vein of like tutoring needs. Mm. So if, if we were to ever get, go back to that model again, I think we would refocus it at colleges and have it as like an open tutoring line so that if you're stuck on something, you can just call in for a couple minutes and get a little bit of help with something. We Because it was like that became a pretty clear problem is that people basically were just fishing for a teacher and then you just pay, take that teacher and go offline or go on to something else with them. Um, and so, but it sort of, it all got ruined pretty much by the pandemic anyway. So <laughs> well, we it actually really worked to, in your favor. Yeah, it kind of did. It was like, ironically, it sort of put up a wall for us right away because a lot of people that were on the platform were basically like, oh, well, I, like no extracurricular stuff for now just to figure out, you know, what's going on and how they're going to manage, you know, whatever it, this was going to be. And then, um, uh, the teachers conversely had basically everyone was saying the same thing. Like, Oh, this would be awesome if I could bring my own students on here. Mm. Um, and so that was, I mean, that was pretty clear line of, okay, let's slightly change it. The nice thing though, is all the infrastructure is the same. So like the audio video connection, the sound profiles and like how the system actually works was already built all ahead of time. So when we got to sort of like the first year was a lot of just implementing more features that were going to help as like a classroom based tool. Um, so that's really what we, we focus on a lot of is providing enough material and content and features that make it so online lessons are actually equal to in-person lessons. Cause it's kind of tiring hearing the whole like, Oh, well, like online lessons are like a second rate or secondary lesson somehow. I mean, we've got thousands of teachers that can prove that wrong. You know, personal, my, like myself personally, I literally only teach online and mm. I do fine with that. And I've never had students complain about it or anything like that. Well, and I'm sure it's made your life better and easier too, because <laughs> you don't have to travel to students. You don't have to have them traipsing through your house, you know, all the yeah, things absolutely. that we used to do to get lessons. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, I mean, there's a lot of benefits to being online. Like one, one of them, like those of, you know, don't have to travel anywhere. don't have people in my house, but also I have students who are in, you know, Washington or Chicago or Massachusetts and I'm in Colorado. So we've never even met each other and we've had the lessons online for, you know, years and we've had tons and hundreds of lessons together and they're all progressing. They're learning their material um, I think it's all about how you utilize the tools. And that's mm -hmm. basically why we are so focused in making more and more features that help with that online teaching. Do you have discovery tools on your platform or are people basically finding their students other ways and bringing them to Musee? Yeah. So it's, we took away all the discovery stuff because it started getting like conflicting with how the program actually works. So mm -hmm. Um, basically because now you bring your students to the platform. So you would sign up as a teacher and then you invite your studio to come and sign up for accounts. And then the way the system works is, you know, it's a little bit like Zoom with the audio video connection, but that's sort of like the, the very, that's sort of where the similarities end. Um, the design of the platform is that everything that occurs on the lesson, like virtually, if we share a file, if we record the lesson, anything, use an interactive whiteboard, any of the tools, 
all that content goes automatically into the student's account and their account doubles as a practice room. So the idea is that for a teacher, you're going to save a lot of time because instead of having lesson notes and emails and videos that you might be making, and you have to do all of that after class and then send it out to the parents. And then the parents have to hand it over to the students. And then it gets a mess being like, well, what apps are, you know, you might have some stuff on Google drive. You might have some stuff, mm-hmm. text messages, some on emails and, now it's a complete mess and it's making it harder for people to teach. So our concept is that with Musi, you go on there and you have your notepad for your lesson notes. All the files are shared automatically. You have a library that you can build up of all your own content. You can make videos right inside the platform and share them right to your students and vice versa. Your students can upload their materials and make videos and recordings for you. So it's really a hub for everything that goes on in the lessons And when the lesson's over, the student has a practice area with all that material already loaded up so they can just track their progress inside the platform. That is just the coolest. I mean, when I heard about all the ways that you make it easier for the teacher, I was really excited about this. I'm I'm trying to get my head around the, the idea of the virtual practice room and how a student would use that. It sounds like they can actually go in there and maybe they're you know, they're singing through a a song and there's like a section that's giving them trouble and they can video themselves and send it to the teacher and say like, this is what I want to work on on my next lesson. Do you hear where my voice is cracking at this point or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. That's a hundred percent. That's a dead on. Exactly. Um, They've also got like metronomes and tools like that built right into their account. So they can just go in, they've got a practice timer and they can pull up whatever material was shared during the lesson. And if you record the lesson, you the students can rewatch portions of that lesson that are important. Mm. So they can create their own practice routines and everything like that. And then, like you said, when they get stuck or they need something, they can just record themselves and it'll go right into a folder that's shared between the student and the teacher. Um, so it makes it really easy. The students don't have to record themselves on a phone and then upload it and then text it or whatever they're, you know, currently doing. It's all just built into one product. And the nice thing is it's all built into the cloud. So it doesn't matter what device your students use. So if they're using their app, you know, their iPad on one lesson, but they're using a laptop in the next lesson, that's totally fine. All the content will be saved to their account. So it doesn't matter what machine they're using. Mm. That's very, very cool. Yeah, that's really good, especially for like teenagers who are flipping between so many different devices (laughs) and stuff, right? Wow. I mean, so if I'm a student and I am working with a teacher and I can just come in there anytime I want and work, is it like actually like going into a Zoom meeting just by yourself? Not (laughs) really. Going into your practice room? Yeah. So your practice room is, is there. So we have like the lesson room and then basically the practice room, there's sort of two different places. The lesson room looks more like a zoom meeting with all the icons mm-hmm. on the bottom and you know, your video screen going and everything. The other one is more like they've got um, a chat box on one side files on the other. And it's sort of all the content that's related to all the lessons they've been doing. So you can see lesson history, you can see recordings, you can see files Um, And it's sort of just like a dashboard and that way the students can pick and choose what it is they want to work on. And they just pop up into windows on the screen. Mm -hmm. Um, So it makes it flexible. So based on how you want to practice, you can set up the window really, however you'd like. Um, We're also building a new assignment tool. That's something that's going to come out in the next few weeks. And that's going to allow teachers to attach lesson notes, files, and instructions all into one bundle. And then the students can track how much practice time they're working specifically on that assignment. Mm. So the the teacher has a little bit more insight on what the students are actually working on specifically. Um, So this is, we're adding, and we're always adding more stuff. Pretty much every Sunday we do an update. So there's, there's always new things. And like I said, it's all from our teacher list. So it's easy to figure out what to do next. (laughs) I know the one thing that musicians struggle with is like the online latency issue. Right. How have you guys dealt with that? Or is it more that they're kind of, you know, maybe they play their own background uh, piano part and they're singing and you're, they're not trying to like do it at the same time. Yeah. So latency is one of those things that like, it's a little frustrating because the there's 
there's been a lot of like misconception or misinformation been pushed around about how it really works. So people are under the assumption that a duet online is somehow possible. It, it pretty much isn't. Right. So, That's what I think too. <laughs> so like it's no matter what you do, like there's no technology the public has access to that can speed up Wi-Fi or create instantaneous video connections. If they did, you'd sell it to the military for mm. billions of dollars. Um, so unfortunately that's just not the reality we live in. And there's a lot of, a lot of people that are being told that there's tools out there that do do this, but in, in actual practice, they rarely actually work. Um, yes, I have this constant conversation with my students. They're like, what about jam Kazam? And then now this new one is like the Jack trip box or something. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, Yeah, it's they're like just in the constant search for this this yeah, thing. It's, it's like the Holy grail or something, but it, it just doesn't exist yet. It's, it's a physics problem, not a, not a software <laughs> problem. So that's what I try to explain to a lot of the teachers that might be curious about that is that it's not, no matter what, that's not really the reality. Now saying that if it's a perfect day, the Wi-Fi is really high powered or you're both on ethernets and you're just down the street from each other, then you actually probably could get pretty close that it might not, you might not even notice. But the one thing we've seen that teachers can do is things like you can play a chord nice and slow, like a slow chord progression and have your students play over that. And that usually works pretty well because you can hear both of the free, like audio, they're separate channels, so they don't cut each other out. So you'll still be able to hear everything and it will come in pretty much in line and if you're playing it slow enough, it won't really matter. Um, so that's one way, but we actually have a specific tool we built called clips that is designed specifically to allow you to do what we call virtual duets and clips is designed so that you, the teacher can hit record and then they play their half of the duet. And then instantly that recording is shared over to the student side and then the student can play the recording and play along with what they're, teacher just recorded and that way the teacher can hear the student playing along with the performance so you can still evaluate the student as if it was a true duet but the re- it's just from a recording that you made you know 10 seconds that's amazing and the teacher's not distracted by having to play yeah. and listen at the same time absolutely yeah you can just sit and listen so that's where we try to explain like there's actually benefits to online teaching that you would never get in person like like that where you can make and the cool thing with our clips tool is if you make a clip it saves there forever so you can just go back to that clip and share it with a different student and over time you'll build out a huge library of all these different little clips you've recorded and you could use it to record just little segments of the lesson that might be important but the duet feature is really cool because it allows you to kind of experience it and or at least allow your students to experience it which is really the important part Mm, yeah, I really love that. Um, so what about like, do groups use this or is it mostly individual lessons? Yeah, we've got tons of groups. Um, there's a lot of lot of teachers that are doing um, groups and hybrid groups. So the hybrid groups are really interesting because that's like having three or four kids in the classroom oh, and yeah. three or four kids online. Hybrid is such a hard thing to, cr- to crack, I think. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's an art form, I'd say, um, because I, especially just the, like setting up your classroom for it is kind of a, a whole mission in itself. Um, but we have designed the platform to allow for that kind of teaching. So mm. what, you, what you do is you just invite all the students who are going to attend, regardless of in person or online, then all the content that is again, occurs on the lesson when you share the files digitally to the online students the in-person kids are all getting a copy of all the content as well. So we actually also have in-person lesson rooms, which is a feature that allows teachers to record their in-person lessons. They can still use the digital file sharing. They can still use the whiteboard. And the advantage there is you just have your iPad or your laptop just seated between the two two of you. And you, you can provide the content digitally as well as physically. So the students always have a virtual record of everything they're working on. Um, and with the hybrid, sometimes it's I'm in class one day and I'm online the next and they go back and forth. So having it saved virtually is really helpful for the continuity. So the students aren't like half on a notebook and half on the computer. 
um, you can just keep it all digital and that sort of solves a lot of those problems. Yeah, that makes sense a lot. Um, do you find that there is like a, a particular clientele for this or is it all over the map? Like, do you have homeschoolers using it? Do you have private teachers using it? Do you have, you know, group lessons using it? It sounds like you've really developed it to serve so many different teachers. Yeah, absolutely. That's something because this is technically not our first product in music, like the teaching space, because the first one we did from that college project that turned into a whole learning management system of its own. Mm. Uh, and one of the big things we learned from that project was basically that everybody teaches slightly differently. And so you have to make it almost modular so that people can sort of pick and choose what they need and make it work the way they want it to. Um, so that was something that we had it sort of in the back of the mind the whole time while we were building it. So um, yeah, we have uh, public schools, private schools, you know, orchestras, private teachers, studios, institutions, there's, you know, teachers who work at multiple different studios. Um, there's kind of everything you can imagine um, as far as big groups, small groups, there's everyone is on it and they all do it slightly different. So mm -hmm. that's so many features available. Um, but we try really hard to make it so that it doesn't become hard to use, um, that all those features are accessible and actually useful to you. Yeah. And it doesn't get like overwhelming and confusing. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's something we learned, you know, on our first product, it, that kind of got overblown and there were too many things available, like just too much stuff really. And so this time we make a very conscious effort that when we add something that it actually has a direct purpose to enhancing either the quality of the lesson or the quality of your student's practice. So it sort of has to fit in these like, spe like specific criteria. We're not just going to build something just for the sake of building it. Um, it's got to be pretty relevant to actually helping you teach. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure. It, how did you guys grow? I know you've grown a ton in the last 18 months. Was it mostly word of mouth? Yeah, pretty much all wow. almost exclusively. Um, yeah, we, you know, Facebook groups and things like that. And um, like the Expand Online Summit was a great one. That's where, where yes, we that's met. where I met you. Yeah. And so like that, those kinds of things have been really helpful. Podcasts, you know, stuff like this. Um, fantastic way of sort of reaching out and, and meeting new people. We don't really do paid ads or like Facebook ads or anything. We found that just teachers like the product. They tell their friends then they tell their friends and just well, and also if students are on there, right, they might have a different teacher and be like, Hey, I use music with yep. this other teacher, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, and we even have teachers who take lessons, mm. so like they have their teachers use it too. So like, you know, that, that's pretty cool. Or like if we get somebody from maybe like a university and they like it, then they'll probably tell all their faculty members about it. Mm. And that sort of helps the spread through places that might not be so easy for us to, you know, cold call or something like that. Right. Um, so yeah, we do a lot of it is just people enjoy the product and then tell everyone else about it and just keep going. That's so awesome. So what, for those that are listening, that this sounds super intriguing, what are the pricing options for teachers? Yeah. So we have a, quite a few different options and sort of the last one in the column is customizable. So mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you tell us what you need and we can work with you. Um, but mainly we have a free account. The free account is pretty limited. It just gives you a good quality audio video connection and a little chat box. So if you don't have, if you don't need many of those other features or you don't have that many students, the free account's a great option just to have the higher quality audio connection. Um, then we have a standard account that's $14 a month. That includes our file sharing or whiteboards. Um, it, it's got tons of, you know, metronomes, uh, chat log, all of that kind of stuff, the practice rooms, all that stuff is in there. Um, that's $14 a month. And that does only one-on-one -on -one lessons. The pro account, which is $24 a month, that has lesson recordings group rooms up to 10 people, but that can also be expanded based on what you need. Um, and then um, we have preloaded games, worksheets, and activities that would go into that account as well. Um, we also have institution accounts. So an admin could buy for their whole studio. Um, those are $25 for the admin and then only $20 per teacher. And the teachers all get pro accounts. Wow. So it's actually slightly discounted to do it that way. 
um, to sort of incentivize the studio to all stay connected together. Um, and then um, the customizable accounts based on what you might need, like for orchestras and stuff like that. So, I mean, that is so incredibly affordable for what you guys are offering for sure. And yeah. one thing I remember mentioning when I had you talk to our out to launch students is that you're basically doing most of the customer service. Like they have, yep. <laughs> they have you in the background, like advocating for them and helping. And, you know, you guys are very hands-on and very much a, you know, a personal company. Yeah, absolutely. It's a huge part of how we've been able to grow is that I personally manage the chat support on the website. So it goes to my phone as a text message. A lot of people think I'm crazy, but I honestly, think you're crazy, but it, it's the only way that's to why I'm it. mentioning it. Cause I'm right, just yeah. impressed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I believe honestly, for me, it's the only way to do it because I want to know exactly what's going on on the platform. You know, that's a little of my control problem, but that's fine. Um, but it's also, I, I want to be able to communicate with the teachers. Like I do all the demos personally on the platform. So I've met hundreds and hundreds of teachers and that's been alone. That is an invaluable learning experience just in itself. And then the chat support is fun because I can interact with people. I can figure out where things might not be so obvious. If, you know, if, if I get a common question about where like a button is or how a function works or something, and people are constantly not sure, then I know that needs redesigning. Mm -hmm. And so it's a really good way for us to keep on top of optimizing the platform. Um, and it's, it's not terrible. Like, you know, sometimes there's 3 a.m. chats that you kind of need to either ignore and just stay sleeping or, or roll out of bed and, and deal with. But um, I do think that's one of the other benefits though of how we've grown is that people really appreciate the fact that it's a real human being on the other end of the line. Yeah, I was going to say that. I think I can't imagine that did not contribute to your growing through all of the referrals that you have. Yeah, I, I hope so, at least, you know, <laughs> as far as like, I, you know, I, I feel like I connect with a lot of the teachers and, you know, it's it becomes more of like a, you, like your friends that are just chatting in to see what's going on kind of stuff. So that's really nice to see. And then, you know, having the hands on experience, especially for students, too, we try to act as like a personal assistant for every teacher. Because if your students are having questions about how to use the platform or where something might be or how something works, instead of them pestering the teachers with all the questions, mm -hmm. we just have them send their students to the chat support as well. Because then we can sort of, we can give them videos or handouts or instructions. Oh gosh, or again, you're saving the teacher so much time. Yeah, that's, that's the idea, right? Is we, we want to sort of unburden you from a lot of the stuff that's been added onto your plates because of online or just the last year or two of teaching. So really it's about optimizing time for teachers and increasing the engagement and the quality of lessons for the students which, you know, overall should increase retention and better studios and better teachers. And, you know, hopefully the cycle goes around. <laughs> yes. Well, I think it definitely does. Well, is there anything else that we didn't cover that you wanted to cover about, about music, music or your, your experience with working with teachers online? Um, I don't, don't think so. Not specifically, you know, just if anyone's interested, the website's just music.live. Um, and we have a Facebook group called music teachers and that's another place that if you want to chat or say hi or check out what we're working on, we're very active in there as well. So you could, you know, message us directly. It's nine times out of 10, you're going to get me as the mm -hmm. person responding. So you can say hi and it's most likely going to be me that responds. Um, we're a family run business. So it's my dad and I who do most of the work. And then we've got people around us in the family and that help it kind of keep the ship sailing. So yeah. If you're interested, just come, come reach out. Yeah, definitely do it. You guys go to musy.live. We'll have the link in the show notes as well. Check it out. I'm telling you, it is so affordable for all of the tools that they are offering for all sorts of teachers. So thanks so much, Sam. This has been really, it's just so inspiring to hear about all these tools that you've built and that you really have the best interest of the teacher and the student in mind with this platform. Yeah, absolutely. It's basically what I wish I had when I was a kid. <laughs> That's how we build good products, right? <laughs> I, same thing for me. Like I'm doing the educational teaching 
that I wish I had when I first went out as a musician. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks so much. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at RondiFay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician. 